welcome along to this Eiffel Presentations video blog, which is all about the recent release of Office 2016, and in particular, PowerPoint 2016. Uh, my name is Matt Roper, and I'm Head of Delivery for Eiffel Digital, and I'm joined by my colleague Lorna. Hi, I'm Lorna. Um, I'm a Eiffel designer and also a technical PowerPoint trainer. I also used to be a technical PowerPoint trainer here at Eiffel, so between us, me and Lorna really do know our stuff. Lorna and I have recently both upgraded our Office and PowerPoint setups from 2013 to 2016. So Lorna, what are your first impressions? Well, you said it best in your blog, really. It's kind of like the iPhone 6S strapline. The only thing that's changed is everything. Yeah, or the only thing that's changed is very little. Yes, I'm afraid so. We've been through PowerPoint 2016 with a fine tooth comb and unfortunately we've found that very little has changed since PowerPoint 2013. So if we take a quick look at the ribbon, not a lot has changed. You still have file, home, insert, design, transitions, animations, etc, etc. Nothing has really changed. This was one that I did notice had changed. We've now got some new graphs in there that could work out to be really useful. A project I'm working on at the minute would have benefited from this, but there you go. So we now have new graphs added in the form of a tree map, a sunburst, a histogram, a box and whisker, and a waterfall. And the only thing I would say, it's, it's nice that Microsoft have added up six new graphs, five or six new graphs. But the main thing is, it's not about how good your graph looks, it's about your story and thinking about what, what's that graph trying to say, what message is yeah. there hidden in that graph, and making sure that's crystal clear to your audience. Yeah, definitely. So, clip art's gone, finally. It's, it's a sad day for us all. When's the last time you used clip art? Um, the answer's never. Yeah, pretty much. Probably, maybe, it, maybe at school a little bit. Yeah, that's, that's the kind of <laughs> level of presentation that has clip art in. But there is a new box at the top um, of PowerPoint that's called Tell Me What You Want To Do. Um, I have a, a sort of mixed reaction to this. Um, I guess because I'm using PowerPoint every single day and I've got my quick access toolbar set up, um, I kind of know where everything I want yeah. is, so this becomes a bit of a nuisance. It's a bit in the way. It's but, a at the same time, when I think about when I jump onto someone else's computer and they've not got the quick That's a really good point. set up, you know, um, finding things like the selection pane, the animation pane can be a bit, a bit of a nightmare. So having that, I can literally type it in. Yeah, that's a really good point. Bring it up. Um, everybody has the quick access toolbar set up to how they prefer it. Yeah. However, you know, whichever tools they use on a daily basis, which I think as people who use PowerPoint day in, day out, we, we totally rely on that, yeah, that definitely. function. So this, this new um, tell me what you want to do box is a little bit alien and I can't quite see how it would work for us. Uh, but like you say, you jump on a computer or, or maybe there's a tool that you know exists, but you're not sure where it is where, in the menus. Yeah. You can literally type into this box. I think though, to be honest, it's more aimed at, at people with devices that have the Cortana uh, voice recognition system, so yeah. they can probably tap on it and start talking, and tools will come up a lot quicker than if you type in, because at the minute, it's a slower way to get to tools than just using your quick access toolbar. Yeah. So is there any other tools or functions that you've discovered that um, are in the new version of PowerPoint but weren't there before? Yeah, I'd like to talk about video actually, because that's something that I found quite useful with 2016, the new tools that are available with it. I think some of them also came with the updates for 2013. Yeah, it's a bit of a grey area because um, PowerPoint 2013, sort of not even halfway through, more like two thirds into its lifespan, they've added some new updates to yeah. it, um, which you kind of spot them when you upgrade to 2016. And because yeah. the, there was not really that much um, warning that they were going to appear in your version of yeah, PowerPoint. Exactly. So there's the outputting video quality. Yeah, yeah, better quality outputs. That's coming really useful. It saves having a separate macro or a separate program to actually output your videos is quite high quality. Yeah, that's right, because um, normally when we're outputting PowerPoints to video, we've not been using the, the inbuilt um, 
output to video options within PowerPoint no. because the resolution is just not good enough. And it's a real pain to go and find uh, the macro coding and have to embed the macro every single time I want to yeah. output a video. So being able to uh, render out from PowerPoint at full quality HD video is going to be awesome. Yeah, really good. There's also something else I spotted in, in 2013 when it was updated was you can record your screen within PowerPoint. Yeah. So whenever we make sort of tutorial videos and things, rather than going to some software like Camtasia, for example, yeah. you can do it straight in PowerPoint, so that's a really good tool. Yeah, it but really comes in handy. Just not strictly new to 2016. No. So one of the other major things that I've seen is new is the collaborative working stuff. Yeah, um, we watched some really, really amazing videos of um, Word in Office 16 being used collaboratively yeah. on on the internet and it looked really really cool in that you could have multiple users logged in you'd be in different locations looking at the same document and you could be typing away and you could see a little flag and literally you would see each other's updates in real time yeah. so we thought we'd put this to the test with powerpoint and we didn't quite get the same results did we no no it was a little bit difficult to start with i guess it's getting your head around it really but i mean when i tried to open the document i was just getting the the, the read-only, um, you can't access the document. And we were hoping with 2016 that that wouldn't happen, but it, it did happen. So we did a bit of experimenting and we moved the PowerPoint file onto our corporate OneDrive account. And this meant when we both opened this, that file and shared that file within PowerPoint on our computers, we got a form of collaboration, but not yeah. the not the all singing, all dancing, um, it's happening in front of your eyes level that no, we see on the videos. it was basically uh, quite a small little note at the bottom that would just tell you there are changes to this document um, and you would have to keep resaving, resaving to be able to see those changes. It's okay, but it's a very clunky experience compared to what yeah. we were expecting, I think it's fair to say. We did take it another step in our research and we we both logged into the PowerPoint app into the same PowerPoint file and then we did see yeah, the, the live level a lot different. the collaboration. Yeah. So Lorna was literally typing away and I would see that on my PowerPoint and vice versa. So yeah. that was nice, but I, I can't see anyone out there wanting to use the PowerPoint app no, to create presentations. Not really. I mean it's okay for sort of small changes. Um, but I mean, you're, you're missing so much yeah, that I mean, you have in the actual program. I tried to insert a couple of different shapes and use the align tool to align them neatly yeah. and it just doesn't exist. Yeah. I, I, so I, I don't really see that app as for creating presentations at all. No. So it kind of makes the collaboration point null and void, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. Because if you're creating a presentation, you need to have full access to all the yeah. tools and if you it just doesn't work basically. Yeah, it's, it's a nice little extra thing, but in terms of how useful it is, I'm not, it's I'm not, not sold. <laughs> it's not quite there, is it? So Lorna, if people are out there, they're running PowerPoint 13 and they're thinking about hitting the upgrade button for 2016, what do you think they should do? Well, it's definitely worth upgrading if you've got the 365 subscription, it's a free upgrade, and those small changes, they might come in handy. Yeah, that, that's it. If, if you're running an older version of PowerPoint, such as PowerPoint 2010 or, 